Now let's see how we can use this in simple problems. Now for example let's take the small example log 6 plus log 5 is expressed as what? We know one thing that log a plus log b is nothing but log a b. So much the same way log 6 plus log 5 is nothing but log of 6 into 5 that is log 30. So this is what we have in our hand. So log 6 plus log 5 is nothing but log 6 into 5 that is log 30. And that's what we have here. Let's move on further. Okay, now here we, have, we did this example. It was just, this was a small portion of the two examples behind log 8 to the base 2. Now here we are going to use two rules of log. One is how does the index become the coefficient? The other is log of any number to the same base is 1. This two, these two rules are often going to be used. So now 8 is a power of 2. So we write this as log 2 cube to the base 2, which is the same as 3 log 2 to the base 2, which is nothing but 3 into 1, that is 3. So log 2 to the base 2 is 1, so we have it as 3. So among them, this is the right answer. Yes, and we have that. Let's move on. These are simple problems. Let's take up a few more problems. Okay, here we have the value of log 0.001 to the base 0.1 is what? So let's put it in the form of an expression. So it is log of 0.0001 to the base 0.1 is what? There are two ways of doing this. We can write this. You can use the same concept. You have log this 0.0001 count the number of zeros 1, 2, 3, 4. That means it is 0.1 raised to 4. This whole thing is 0.1 raised to 4. We shouldn't be forgetting to put the base. If you don't introduce a base, it means the base is taken as common logarithm. So now it's similar to the previous question. It's log of 0.1 raised to 4 to the base 0.1 which can be written as 4 log 0.1 to the base 0.1 which is 4 into 1 which is 4 and yes we have 4 as the right answer yes we can verify that it's 4. Now further let's take our task further to the next uh, example. Okay, now here we have another interesting example here. 2 log x is equal to 4 log 3. Now, then x is equal to what? Read the question thoroughly. You never know they could have asked. They would have been asked x square as what? So, read the question. So, we have 2 log x is equal to 4 log 3. Remember, never do the mistake of cancelling log and log. Log by itself has no value. It has to be log of some number, so it's not log into x, nor is this log into 3. So we can't cancel log. But yes, we can use the rules of log. Remember that whatever is a coefficient in front of a log can be taken as a power of the number of which it is a log. So this can be written as log of x square. Same way here, this becomes a power, so it is log 3 raised to 4. So, log of one number, you converted the whole left hand side to log of one number is equal to log of another number. If two numbers are equal, their logarithms are equal. Hence, conversely, if logarithms of two numbers are equal, the numbers are equal. So, x square is equal to 3 raised to 4. So, we can either convert this to 81 and hence find x or we can write this as 3 square the whole square. So x square is 3 square the whole square, therefore x has to be 3 square. That is 9. So the value of x is 9. So the x is equal to 9. So this is going to be our option. We will come across many such examples further, but this is a very simple application of the concept of logs. Yes, the answer is 9. Let's see. From here, where we go? Okay, this is also similar to this. 
So we have log 64 to the base root 2. Now root 2 if you see is going to be root 2 square is 2. So we need to find out we know that 2 raised to 6 is going to be 64. If you use a calci and multiply 2 with itself 6 times you get 64. That means if it is 2 raised to 6, it has to be root 2 raised to 12 would be equal to 64. 2 raised to 6 is the same as root 2 raised to 12. So it is told log 64 to the base root 2. Now the 64 has to be written as some power of root 2. We know that 2 raised to 6 is 64, which as I told you, we have a calculator to use it. Now if 2 raised to 6 is 64, then using the laws of indices, root 2 raised to 12 is going to be 64 2. So that means 64 can be written as root 2 the whole raised to 12 and this is to the base root 2. So 12 log root 2 to the base root 2 which is the same as 12 into 1 which is going to be 12. So we have 12 as our option. Yes, we do have 12 as the option. And let's verify whether we are right. Yes, 12 is the right answer. Okay, so next is a similar bigger problem 1728. It's log 1728 to the base 2 root 3. Now, this is a little dicey, especially. Uh, for anybody. So what we need to do is we could possibly try and factorize 1728 to find how many 2's do we have here and how many 3's we have here because we need to express this in terms of some power of 2 root 3. So we have 2, 8 and you have 12, 8, 60, 4 and then you have 2, 4, 32 and you have 2 which is 216 and you have 2108 and you have 254 and you have 2 which is 27. So ultimately this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So eventually this is 2 raised to 6 and 27 is of course 3 cube. So this is actually 2 raised to 6 into 3 as I told in the previous example you can write this as make this root 3 correspondingly multiply the power by 2 to nullify the text so 3 cube is the same as root 3 raised to 6 so it's actually 2 root 3 raised to 6 this is how we do it so you prime factorize it and you get it as 2 raised to 6 into 3 cube 3 cube can also be written as root 3 raised to 3 into 2 6 so it's 2 root 3 raised to 6. So now hence the usual thing you have, you can write this as log of 2 root 3 raised to 6 to the base 2 root 3, which is 6 log 2 root 3 to the base 2 root 3, which is 6 into 1, and that is 6. So among these, the option is going to be 6. So this is how we can try and factorize in case the number gets a little big. And yes, we do have that as the answer. Let's move from here to the next one. Okay. Now here you have log of 1 by 81 to the base 9 is what? So there is one more way of doing it as you can claim this or for a change let's do it this way let this be equal to x and we need to find the value of x that's what it is so 1 by 81 if you change it to exponential form is nothing but 9 raised to x now 1 by 81 can be written as 1 upon 9 squared which is nothing but 9 raised to x 1 upon a raised to m is a raised to minus m so 9 raised to minus 2 is 9 raised to x so we have x is equal to minus 2. The other option is we can write 1 by 81 as 9 raised to minus 2. We can even write 
this as 9 raised to minus 2 to the base 9 which is minus 2 into log 9 to the base 9 which should be eventually minus 2 into 1 which is minus 2. So we can do it by conversion to exponential form or you can use the rule of log of a to the base a is 1. So the answer that we have over here is minus 2. Let's verify. And yes, the answer is minus 2. So let's see what we have next in hand. Okay, here we have something here log of 0 0.0625 to the base 2 is equal to what? Now here you will need your calculator and a little bit of logic we need to work on. So let's we have log of 0 0.0625 to the base 2 is x. Now that means that 2 raised to x is 0 0.0625. Now it's quite obvious there is no power of x which can be such a small number, no power of 2 sorry which can be such a small number but there is some power of 1 by 2 that means if this is a negative power that means this is this can even be written as half raised to what is 0 0.0625. Half raised to something can be 0 0.0625. So now we have to look half is nothing but 0 0.5 raised to x is 0 0.0625. If you look into your Calci, or if you if you are very clear, we know that five raised to four is 60, 625. So point five raised to four is going to be zero point zero six two five. So x is going to be four. In other words, half raised to four is zero point zero six two five, which is the same as telling. 2 raised to minus 4. Remember, 1 upon a raised to m is nothing but a raised to minus m. 2 raised to minus 4 is 0 0.0625. That means x should be equal to minus 4. That means log of 0 0.0625 to the base 2 is actually minus 4. Because 2 raised to minus 4 is 0 0.0625. Mm, no, but we don't have this as the option. So obviously, we have to tick mark this. This would be the thing because 4, 5 and 1 cannot be because this is a number less than 2. So it has to be a negative power. Let's check this. And yes, none of these because the value of this is going to be minus 4. You're right. Now, next. Next we have is log 2 is 0 0.3010 and log 3 is 0 0.4771. Now, where does this value come? There is a log table, which is for the common log. Again, remember, the base has not been mentioned. We take the base as 10. So, basically, it means log 2 to the base 10 is 0 0.3010 and log 3 to the base 10 is 0 0.4771. Using these values, how would we find this? Now, we have log 6. We know that log 6 is the same as log of 2 into 3. Mind you, it's not log 2 into log 3. It's just log of 2 into 3. Now, here we are going to use the rule that log AB is the same as log A plus log B. So, we are going to write this as log 2 plus log 3. So, log 2 we know is 0. 2010 plus 0 0.4771. So it's going to be what? 4771. So it's going to be 813. So it's going to be 0.7781 would be our answer. It's definitely that as the answer. So we're using the rule log A into B is this. So this will be our option. And yes. That's what we have in our hand. So, in such a case, it's going to be understand again the relation between 6, 2 and 3. We get it. What do we have next? The value of log 1 by 3 to the base 9. So, we have log 1 by 3 to the base 9 
is what? Log of 1 by 3 to the base 9 is what? So we can write this as x. Therefore, 1 by 3 is 9 raised to x. Base raised to the index. Remember the logarithm is the index. Now this can be written as 3 raised to minus 1 and this can be written as 3 square 9, the whole raised to x. We use the rules of indices, power of power rule. So 3 raised to minus 1 is 3 raised to 2x. So 2x is equal to minus 1. So x would be equal to minus half. The other option that is there is we can write 1 by 3 as 9 raised to minus half. So it will become log of 9 raised to minus half to the base 9. So minus half log 9 to the base 9, which will be again minus half. So we have minus half as the option here. So as I told, we can change it to this way. I will explain this once more. We can even say log of 9 to the base minus half is also 1 by 3 because Square root of 9 is 3. When you take the reciprocal, you get 1 by 3. So log of 9 to the base minus half to the base 9. So we have minus half log 9 to the base 9, which is minus half into 1, which is minus half. So you do it either this way or this way, whichever you find suitable. Again, you can change your strategy depending upon the difficulty level of the sum or how the uh, expression has been formatted. Yes, and we have minus half just to confirm. Right now, log x plus log y is equal to log x plus y. Hence, y can be expressed as what? Here, we are going to do something which we did earlier. We are going to simplify this expression and knock out the log and see what we get. So, we have log x plus log y. It's a very beautiful example which can tell you what you cannot do to log x plus y. Now this is, you cannot write log x plus y as log x into log y because it's log of x plus y. But yes, this can be written in that way. We can write this as log xy. You're using the rule log a into b is log a plus log b. But this cannot be disturbed. This is going to remain as it is. So it's log of xy being equal to log x plus y. And again, log of one number is equal to log of another number. If two numbers are equal, the logarithms are equal. Conversely, if the logarithms are equal, the numbers have to be equal. So we have xy is equal to x plus y. Now again, we have to get a little alert. By the time we finish our calculations, we are so happy that we may tend to miss out on the question. So go back. We need to find out what y could be in terms of x. So we collect all the x, y terms together. So it's x, y minus y is x, y bracket x minus 1 is x. So y would be equal to x upon x minus 1. So y can be expressed as x upon x minus 1. So our man is going to be this. So Yes, and we can reaffirm that. So this is how we have a few simple problems on the various ways in which we can use the concept of logarithms. Let's see what we have further. At this junction, there is something very important that I would like to tell you, dear students, is that often what you're doing right now is a passive learning process, wherein I'm solving, I'm doing it for you. So you possibly could get the illusion that, okay, I have understood it. But ideally, I would suggest, look at a sum, don't wait for the solution to happen, pause the video, take a piece of paper, try to solve it yourself, and then get back to the video and check whether your answers are tallying and the methodology is similar to that. That boosts up your confidence. Agreed, initially, may not be able to do for every problem, but start with at least 30 to 40% of the problems and then move over to the entire problem, you'll get a confidence which is going to be real and not a superficial confidence. Otherwise, it's going to be just me solving. It may not really help you. But hence, always keep a calculator and a pencil and a notebook or a pen and a notebook nearby. Pause the video, work on it, and then get back to the video to check how close you are.